how to make a sport mix. All right, so this is sort of the intersection of like trance, hard groove, techno, and then deep house. I really think that's the formula here, is you're using trance and, tech and hard groove and techno kind of drums and bass, and then deep house sounds over it, right? So we're at 140 BPM, and then also the BPM's a little faster. We're starting here with this e piano. So here's the MIDI going on here. If you look at this, it might seem kind of complicated. These are honestly like pretty simple chords. Right, with just some kind of strange inversions. All right, so like if you look at this here, for example, you know, that could be like a A sharp minor nine. You could also view it as a C sharp major seven though, with some extra voices down here. So basically what you're gonna do, even like without music theory or without like breaking this down on the most musical level, because if I'm being honest, you know, I know how to put together notes that work and I have an ear. I don't necessarily know all of what's going on with these kinds of deep house things. You don't need to though. That's the beauty of the modern era, right? I know that if you find like a chord, right? Like start with, like I said, either this C sharp major seven or a sharp minor nine, right? And then start adding little voices inside of the scale, you know? And that's how you get these jazzy chords. I mean, yes, I think the people that write these chords often do know what they're doing, but at the same time, you don't really need to because the jazzy chord thing comes from just knowing voices inside of the scale and then adding them, you know, past what would be like a normal major or minor chord. So I would think of it more like that as far as a modern producer goes. And then kind of creating a rhythm and a melody with this, right? Like, right? Like, these are all just, you know, it's just creating that second chord to sort of be like a melody. You know, up here even, like, you could kind of view this just as like a basic F sharp or an F minor chord with a seventh and then a sixth and a fifth down here. So it's like, it's not always going to be perfect, but you're just creating these jazzy chords using the scale. We've got two layers, so I got this. Like this E piano, right? This is just a sample being looped. And then we've got the envelope set like this, right? Just short and punchy. I've got a little bit of echo, a little bit of reverb, high pass, and then we're side chaining it. And then I have this clavinet. Right, like sort of like some live stuff here using Ableton's Tension, I believe this is. And then that's going through a bit of echo and reverb, high pass, and then side chain. It's the same processing. But again, we're going for deep house here. So you don't really want crazy synthesized kind of like, you know, doing too much sounds. Like these are very simple, but that's the sounds that work here. It's meant to be something more warm, more organic, more human. <laughs> So then we got this little stab. Right, so if I play that with the other chords, they kind of all work together. Right, so these are really simple chords. And we're in the key of F minor here, which we are. This is doing, right, it's just droning that F. And then we go down to the fifth, and then up to the third. So it kind of changes chords with the other chord, but there's still that one note staying the same. And it's still really all just in the same scale, right? But the sound on this one, I made it with Operator. This is a sound that would... Like, if you play it low without reverb and delay... It's just like a standard sort of like deep house donk sort of bass, right? We're creating this just with two FM oscillators and operator here. I've just got one an octave up. And then you can see it's got this short envelope. So that's how you get the punch to it, right? If I turn that up, it just sits in the same place. This is what gives it that, like, kind of shorter sound, right? And we got a bit of delay, a bit of reverb, and then I have those going into a phaser. Which is honestly pretty heavy, but I think it helps give this that kind of vintage, old school sort of warmth. And like just that more 90s sort of feel. Because also when we talk about Deep House in terms of the sport mix, it's 90s Deep House, right? It's not, I'm not talking like all over Helen's here. Like I'm talking like giving it that old Carrie Chandler sort of feel, right? So this kind of stuff really helps to just make it feel a little more old school, a little more flavorful. 
We got a high pass, and then we're just side chaining. And then the last sort of synth here is the string. Right, classic deep house stuff. We're actually playing a fifth here, which is another good technique from deep house, right? We're in the key of F minor, but then this string is gonna actually drone the fifth, which would be C. And see how it really gives us that vibe versus if we put it to F. For whatever reason, Because it's jazzier when you put it on C, right? If you put it on F, the second you hear this and you hear the other chords, your brain registers, oh, that's the same note. If you put this on C, your brain's hearing they're at different notes that are more so creating a harmony rather than like just playing the same note. And then you get this more jazzy sort of feel. And also because that is literally a technique from jazz that was essentially just kind of brought into dance music, right? But then what we're doing here is this is the string sample. I want to show you guys how to do this, you know, in a more kind of like, again, it's about creating that old school sound. So instead of using really high quality modern string libraries, you could, but then you can also do it like this. Just get like an old string sample. Like if I play this one on its own. And then just loop it inside of the symbol here. And then I'm using the fade. And you get this endless loop. It's going through a bit of echo. And then just some side chain. And that's really it. And then that, that's pretty much the synth. You, know, you don't want it to be too much that's going to clash. Like It's about creating an atmosphere. And also, now there's room for some vocals. You know, you can like get a vocal over that and give it some vibe. But then we got the kick. So this is where we start to get into trance techno sort of town, right? This is obviously, you know, a nice hard techno trance sort of kick. You know, we're not in deep house land anymore, Dorothy. Uh, so we got this. I'm tuning it, right? I just put it up one. You can barely hear it, but it puts it in key with the bass line. We're cutting out a little bit of sub and then converting it to mono. Here's the bass line. So you notice the bass is very simple. And this is another thing, like, when you have these really crazy chord stabs, you don't really want the bass to be also jumping around. See how just those two notes of bass, that's all it is, just two notes. And then it does have a bit of rhythm because it's got the side chain, so it's like... You know, let the rhythm come from that. If you're going to have these more hectic crazy patterns and you want it to be a smooth track like the point of this i would say would be to make like deeper kind of smoother more jazzy music you don't want the bass line to be crazy right you don't want like a normal trance bass here you just want something nice warm fat and powerful so what this is is it's basically two square waves inside of operate or inside a wavetable you can see they're an octave apart so you get a really big full sound, we're just playing C sharp and F, the sixth into the fifth, right? And then also by having that like sort of resolve on the fifth rather than, or on the root, rather than start on the root, that's also adding to the jazziness of the overall composition. We're taking the square waves though, and then we're low passing them. You know? So you just get this deep, warm, it's almost a sine wave, it's almost a triangle wave, but it's going to be a bit more analog, it's going to be a bit warmer, and it's going to get in the mix a bit better. Like, I think if this was just a sine wave or a triangle, even though it would already be close without having to filter, there's things that are happening. And I put this filter on 12 dB, I've got the resonance up, like, there's some harmonics coming through that you just can't get unless you do it this way. We got a little bit of a sub cut, converting to mono, and then we got this auto pan, again, for the side chain. So even though it is just like two notes, there's still rhythm there, right? From the more so from like the volume shaping, though, rather than from having like a crazy hectic pattern. So then we got our main drums. We got a hi hat and a clap. Ironically, these same exact drums you could use in trance or in deep house, and I think it would still fit, right? Just you know, fat 909, 808 sounds. And then under those, you need some breakbeat and rave loops. Right? This is all of that live percussion that you hear. We can see it's fine without it, but obviously with it, it really gives it the overall texture. And I think what it's doing also is like everything I've showed you so far, 
is programmed. It's MIDI with one sample or one sound being played, which is important in your mix, but also is a bit rigid and is a bit like kind of flat and robotic. All of these were played live. You know? Whether it's been processed later or not, this all has like live playing in it. And that's something, even though like some people would say don't use loops, MIDI program, everything, bro. You can't get live performance out of MIDI. And even if you play it in with a MIDI controller, even if you got Ableton Push and you're doing all the velocity, all that, there's just something that comes from, like, recording a shaker live. And I'll also say it, too. Like, yeah, you know, these house loops from the 90s and stuff have a lot of processing and they have a lot going on. That's the point. You know, use that. It's not about, oh, we can't use that. We're too good for that. Oh, you think you're too good for this, man? Like, you know, just use it. That has the flavor. That has the thing that these guys are using. And whether you feel you're too good to use loops or not, the pros are. And they're getting booked. And they're getting tracks on the labels you want. So you might as well, you know, get in there with that as well. And do creative things. I mean, this, you know, that, like, Faster Horses Sport Mix is such a good example of that. Yeah, he used drum loops. Fine. But there's something really, really creative going on there. It's more so about he used the drum loops to do a very creative vision of trance, techno, deep house kind of all coming together. And it's like, okay, use the drum loops so that you can do that because it's serving a greater vision of like, what would it sound like if I do all this rather than just, oh, look at me, everybody. I don't use loops. You see what I'm saying? So I've got a little bit of a high pass and just side chain on all of these. You know, like some of these start as full loops even. Right, and then we just do this to kind of make it fit into the mix. These last two are really important too because they add like a lot of like mid range. And there we are. So that's me for this one, guys. That's how to do a sport mix. You guys actually requested this one, so let me know if you want to see more in the comments. Let me know what you want to see next as well. Thanks for the support, guys. You can grab this full template on top of the description on my website. Definitely do not miss out. It's a really great template. I think you can build a lot of sick tracks off of this. Plus, it'll really help you take your tracks that you've already been making to the next level today. Thanks for the support, everybody. It really helps, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.